Hey guys, welcome to the Best Family Homestead. Uh, so, on this episode, we're gonna go down and look at the old barn we were walking through yesterday and show you guys the inside of the old barn. Um, it was too much to get all into one video and I really want you guys to see everything that's on the inside of that barn. This was built as a horse barn when they used to have work horses. And uh, so this was the feed, this was the feeding where they would feed, you know, right? Daddy fixed this when he had an old upright silo. We can go around there and film the foundation in a minute, but it was hard work. You pitchforked silage out of the old upright silo down into the shed, and then you had to wheelbarrow it down into this feedway here. I've got it full of junk right now. Well, people see where I get it from. Cause this is storage right now for my junk, but this is all going away just as soon as I get a chance to go through it. Now y'all see where I get it from. I said the same thing in the homestead walk around yesterday. We come, we come from a long line of people that never threw anything away, probably because of the depression era. So I showed, uh, I was showing them the eight in on the best family homestead walk around. Uh, this old fire mall, uh, this old fire mall has been here for a long time too, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been here since 1955. My dad bought it from his uncle in 1955. What year is it? It's a 50 model, Super A farm mall, and the thing runs like a champ. I still use it. This is my gardening tractor and my potato plowing tractor. How many uh, how many rows of how many rows of potatoes do you think this thing's dug up in its life? Well, my dad put out 200 pounds of seed potatoes every year, and we probably dug 75 bushels. And my dad give them to the neighbors and all the elderly and everybody that needed potatoes. We'd dig them and put them in bags and burlap sacks in the back of the old truck. And then we'd haul them around to all of the needy people and the poor and everything else around in the valley. And we'd give everybody potatoes. For those of y'all that don't understand how, how much that is in bushels and and uh, just suffice it to say that that's a lot of potatoes you that this tractor is. Still fires right up. Great old tractor. Great old tractor. And these were the stalls. How many stars? Four stalls? One, two, four, yeah. Well, see, that's the manger over there, and there's a trap door in the floor up there. So all you did was open the trap door and throw hay down into the manger. And it's got to have some foundation work done on it. This barn supposedly was built on a swamp. So one year we had a really bad winter and it froze and busted the foundation. Well, when that's on the to-do list. When you are. Uh... 100 years old you'll probably need some foundation work too i need some foundation work now <laughs> this uh, stocks for my livestock head gate so if i need to do any anything with my caves i can run them through here and i've got access doors where i can run them in here and get to them to vaccinate them or give them a shot or whatever but you run them uh, If I can remember, I hadn't used this thing but one time. You run them in and then you, you head gate them. And it, I think it goes both ways. You get your, you get them to run their head hood and you trap them and it's adjustable. They were different size animals. A lot safer than uh, trying to wrangle them. Yeah. <laughs> There was a day when I could handle a 500 pound calf, but those days are long gone. It's back in the corner back there, that's an old tobacco scale. Most people call them a cotton scale. 
I right. think I have everything of it to for it. But you hang it and you've got big weights in there that you hang on the hook and it slide them. Uh... That's the buggy seat. That's off the original family buggy yeah, and better. one of my cousins ended up with a buggy. I was going to make a bench out of it one of these days but I just hadn't got around to it. Alright, so here's the... That's the seed cleaner. This was the tack room. This is what... That's a, seed, a Chatham seed cleaner from probably around the 1890s. And it's still... It's still... Uh, it still has all of the... All of the... The airflow the controls on it. So it's just got a big drum in here that spins, huh? It's got a big fan in there, a big wooden fan. Oh, okay. So you put the seat in here and just blow, yeah, you put just the seat all the and you can, adjust, you can adjust the flow right here. And when you crank it, it the seat shakes down. Come around here and you can see. See, that has different screens in it, which the screens all need to be replaced. But it's made to uh, to blow the chaff off of the seed. And then it comes out down there at the bottom, huh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. But it's rare, it's rare to find one this complete that still has all of the panels. I can dust it off and it still really looks really good. You can see all the pin striping and everything on it. Yeah. It was really elaborately made. Yeah, it, it is, especially for for the time. And the old drive chain is bent wire, which I thought was cool. Huh. Yeah, that's held up. Old tack. A little bit of it. I got some of it. You see a lot of these in movies when they're working ox. Yeah. And the family, they did use oxen years ago, but this is an uh, ox. It's a, I, I always heard it called a drover's tool. I don't know what the actual name of it is. I've spent a lot of hours in this barn either working or just playing. So this is the barn loft and now it's my dad's woodworking shop and junk store because we don't raise no tobacco anymore his mother calls it our redneck storage that's it we've got shelves built this barn still has the original track up front up and top for hay right so that's our for those of you guys that don't know, that big hole over there. Well, they would, they would, they would, uh, it had a elevator, right? A hay elevator? And they, but they'd bring the hay up here and, oh, they, oh, they just drop it? They'd bring a big wagon down below that. You can see how that goes out the gate. And, uh, I used to room and kind of know how this thing worked. It sat like that, yeah. and then when they dropped it into the hay, it tripped somehow. Oh, there we go. And these two little things here stuck out, and believe it or not, that would buy a great big stack of hay. Oh, so this was before they bailed it. Oh, yeah, that was way before they bailed it. This is part of the That would just be loose hay. And they'd pull the wagon up and just drop that into the into the pile of hay and then it they'd what they they winch it up or like like with rope, that rope right over there. And then this would just get all filled up with hay. Be a big piles of big stacks of hay, and it was. I've heard stories about it being next to impossible to feed. I've uh, but that rope is close to a hundred years old, it's hung there all my life. Well, except for when I used to take it down and pretend to be a mountain climber and climb around in here with it. I did that too. 
This barn is mostly built out of chestnut wood. And if that was that was before the that was before the chestnut black that yeah, killed all the American the chestnuts. Black. And this right here is a chestnut pole. And if anybody's curious as what the American chestnut bark looked like, this is it. There's not. There's not this is American uh, chestnut. It's pretty much all extinct now, isn't it? Pretty much. I've I've heard stories about the Forest Service just uh, putting them with enough of. Uh, Chinese chestnut to get the characteristics of the American chestnut. And you see those holes? Those holes weren't bored after after the barn was built. The the the, the these uh no they were I forget what kind of beetles it was that killed. It was them. A, it was a fungus that killed the well, ch chestnuts. But that, that those holes are from what killed off all the chestnuts. No, was it not? No, those holes were worms that moved into the chestnut. When this barn was, this I thought was it was a worm. boar. I thought no, it was a boring beetle. It was so. a fungus. Okay. That was brought with the Chinese chestnuts. But if you find uh, chestnut wood that's been put up and uh, taken care of well, and you can still find some, it's not wormy. It's only wormy after it stands for a long time, sawed. But this barn is mostly made out of, out of chestnut, American chestnut. And most of the poles are American chestnut. And then that, this one right here, I think is a birch. Yeah, it's a birch. This one looks like a birch. This one's a chestnut pole. And then uh, I think I've seen some locust poles, but most everything in here is chestnut. So what, what I said, what I remember this barn being used for is at the back of barn. It was. And this That's a tobacco is stick. a tobacco stick. So for those of you guys that don't know, what you do is tobacco grows up about this high and you take care of it cut the flower off and then you have a metal spear that goes on here it's a little thing with a sharp point and you go by hand and then you cut every single stalk and oh. you you put it at the end down on this stick so you'll have you know anywhere between four to six stalks of tobacco on here and it weighs about 50 pounds weighs when about you get 50 it all. pounds and you'll have just a field slap for hundreds of them and, and, and you'll just leave them in the field then you go through on a trailer and you put it all on the trailer. Then you come to the barn door. Here, hold this. So, you have your stick full of tobacco, and then you have... You have people standing on this run, on that run. And in this barn, you have three high. You had... See how he's standing on the poles? Yeah. He's but on. remember, this stick weighs about 50 pounds. It's got about five big socks of tobacco. And you usually start early in the morning uh, when everything is really wet and you get soaking wet and hanging the back early in the morning in the dew and the fog. So you hand this up to that person, he hands it up to the next person. And, and this barn is one, two, three, four, five tears and then you lay it. Lay them like that. You hang it, lay it like that and the tobacco is hanging down and it cures it. In other words, it dries. Yep, it I dries. call it curing tobacco, but it dries. And then down here, I don't know if you can see it, but down here on this lower level, we had poles lined up. Well, part of the poles are right there, and we'd hang poles across right here, and we'd hang the back of down here too. This barn would hold probably a. This barn, including the lower shed, would hold about two acres of tobacco. And I'm telling you, it was a couple full days work. A timber swing cut about depending on the growth on the year what to buy hanging tobacco yeah labor day yeah and they so, called it i'm we telling you it labor day because we labored we were always cutting or hanging tobacco on labor day and i promise you something when you're up there on the top it's hot it is hot next to that tin i'm putting hay up there it is hot too but, so this old barn has seen its fair share of uh seen its fair share of work in here and it is still pretty and still in really good shape. This is a regional roof on this barn. 10, the 10 and the 20s was a lot better than any 10 you can buy today. Yeah. Because this barn still, it's got a few pieces that need to be screwed back down, but this barn does not have a leak in it. And to my memory, it's only been painted one time, but it needs, the roof needs to be painted now. So obviously back when I was a kid, there wasn't any other houses you could see here except for the old farmhouse. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was, this was where I grew up. Picture, picture perfect place for sure. Um, 
this is where we're standing over the feed not way. the stall but we're standing over the feed way. feed way the first shed we came up to and so that's why those boards are sitting there because uh that's where you'd pitch the hay down and then So there was the barn loft full of tobacco, there was this shed full of tobacco, and then there's another big just uh, tobacco and feeding barn up there, so uh, plus another little shed. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of tobacco hung in here. Yeah, we grew about four acres of tobacco. My, uh, my we seat. fed hay right here, this is what's left of the old hay rack and we'd kick a square bale still hay here into a feedway right here in the cows and pick through like a woven wire fence along through here and they would pull the hay out so they didn't waste that much hay and just uh, after you guys watching the old uh, or the uh best family homestead this is my little sister's uh stuff here so you can see the uh, collecting stuff is genetic you never know when you'll need it